Thanks for watching Afternoon Live. Life often doesn't work out the way that we planned, but our next guest believes that's part of the fun. He is a sought after motivational speaker with over 60 million social media followers and the author of the new book, Protect Your Peace, Nine Unapologetic Principles for Thriving in a Chaotic World. We welcome Trent Shelton. Thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thanks for having me, Hannah. I truly appreciate you. Hey, congratulations. I know you've been working on this book for a really long time. What's it like to just begin to start, to start sharing it with the world now? Uh, it's amazing. Um, this book has been over a decade process, uh, just figuring out how to protect my peace and what that means to me and having the world be able to experience this process and learn how to protect their peace is, uh, it's, a, it's a real moment. I'm, I'm so, so excited that uh, people get to experience it. For sure, you've really been fighting your way through lots of obstacles and achieving success for a long time. Take me back to young Trent as you uh, finish your collegiate career, you head into the NFL, and it wasn't exactly as you planned it. How did you shift your focus and keep around the prize and keep moving in a positive direction? Yeah, you know, I hit my rock bottom. Uh, that was my biggest dream, but it turned into my biggest nightmare. And at my rock bottom, I had a choice. You know, just like we all have a choice, either I can sink or I can swim. I can say this is it or I can say this is the end of this chapter, but it's not the end of my story. And I decided to say, you know what, it's the end of this chapter, but my story uh, is just beginning. And I didn't know what that was at the time, but I did know that I didn't want to stay in this place of depression, that I want to go live my best life. You have this three-pronged approach that talks about protecting your energy, your mind, and your soul. You share some really concrete things that your readers can take back and kind of apply to our own lives. One of those tips that you start with in setting boundaries, tell me more about that, why that's so important. Uh, it's very important. You know, boundaries are beautiful. And I think boundaries gets a bad rap sometimes because we think boundaries are walls to keep things out. And I would like to present the idea that boundaries can be walls if necessary. Somebody keeps disrespecting your boundaries, but boundaries are really bridges uh, to let the right things in. So I would ask the listeners right now, like, what do you need in your life? Is it peace? Is it strength? Is it et cetera? What boundary do you need to set to experience that? Um, and most people don't set boundaries because they feel guilty. They feel guilty for choosing themselves. They feel guilty for saying yes to themselves. And I believe this is the year we have to say yes to yourself more and say no to the things that drain you, stress you, and don't serve your life. Yeah, no is a very powerful word that can be hard for us to use sometime. And kind of uh, going off of that, knowing your own worth, that's really tough for us, but it's so important to put into practice. Absolutely, you know, um, knowing your worth is hard because most people's worth, and this was me for so long, it's tied to some external. It's tied to your job. It's tied to how people feel about you. It's tied to your bank account. And the scary part about that is those things aren't consistent. You know, um, those things can be up. They can be down. And so what I've learned to tie my worth to something more permanent, uh, my faith, um, to how I was created to be. I love to say you were given worth at birth, and I hold on to that. And so those outside things, you know, they can go up and down, but it's very hard for those things now to control how I feel about myself. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. How about trusting your own vision? I think trusting ourselves sometimes is easier said than done. Yeah, um, I would tell people, first you gotta prove it to yourself. And uh, what I mean by that is by doing the work, is by doing the reps, is by being consistent and committed to your dream or your vision. And understand like your vision is yours. Most times when we have a vision, we bring it to everybody around us, expecting them to see it, but it's not meant for them to see. The vision was given to you. And so uh, you have to trust that and you have to believe that um, that that dream, that purpose is meant for you and other people will see it when you actually fulfill it and make it come to life. How about simplifying happiness? It's such a simple term, but how do you really tap into that? Yeah, so when you read the book, you'll hear the story about my daughter, Mar Marley. Uh, if you have kids, you know kids are, you know, just happy just for the littlest things. It could be morning, it could be, you know, uh, cereal that they have, they're just happy. And I realize as adults, as we get older, we complicate happiness. I mean our happiness checklist is almost impossible. You know, the Starbucks line has to be short, no traffic, you know, everybody has to love me today, all these things gotta go right, and that's mission impossible. And so I've learned how to simpl simplify happiness by just saying like, you know what? Happiness is a choice, that's an internal job. I'm gonna choose to be happy because I have a roof over my head. I'm gonna choose to be happy because I'm having this interview. And that's a perspective shift that can change your life. And your beautiful family is on that photo. Gosh, they're so gorgeous. Can you update us? On your other daughter, Maya, Super Maya, I know she went through a lot while you were writing this book, and it seems like she's just thriving today. Yeah, Maya is uh, legendary. Yeah, Maya had a big scare um, with her brain, 
But, uh, you know, it ended up being a beautiful blessing because we found out some situations in her brain that we would have never found out if it wasn't for that accident. And Maya's thriving. She's doing great. Uh, beautiful as ever, as well as my other two kids. So happy to hear that. And you also, I know you have your mom watching over you. This is about the three-year anniversary of, of her passing while you were writing this book. What do you yeah. think that she's thinking as she's looking down on you today? Uh, she's, she's, she's excited. Uh, my mother... Uh, she never shied away from from recon, recon, uh, praise or recognition, which she deserves it all. And this book was dedicated to her. Um, actually, this book comes out, which is tomorrow, March 5th. And that's the last time I see my mother alive. And so uh, I didn't even plan that release date. So she's working her synergy or energy. It's just all around this book. And I know she's happy. She's letting you know. She, you're, she's watching you at all times. Thank you so much for being with us today. Congratulations on the book. Thank you so much, Hannah. I appreciate you. Of course, and we'll have more information on our website at katu.com. We'll be right back with more Afternoon Live right after this.